Hi everyone, uh, this is Sean McCarthy here at SmartBear. I um, would like to welcome everyone ex at Experian to the webinar today, this 30 minute webinar. Um, just wanted to give you the, so some brief background. So we recently conducted a survey with all our Experian users and we found out that 71% of everyone at Experian using our SOAP UI Pro tool was uh, satisfied with the tool. So what we wanted to do today is just a quick uh, overview on the kind of latest, on the latest version of SOAP UI Pro. Um, we also want to take a look at uh, other ways you can further leverage the Ready API platform um, to, I suppose, to make uh, things more efficient from a API quality assurance uh, standpoint. Um, the main thing we'd love to do is, is hear from you guys, get some feedback, um, ask us questions, uh, things you're seeing day to day. Anyway, we might be able to help make your experience better of uh, Ready API uh, as a platform and a tool that's very widely used over at Experian. So on the call, we have one of our senior engineers uh, for the Ready API platform, Ronan Trainer, um, and he's going to be bringing you through uh, our our kind of high level overview today for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we'd like to then open it up for a Q and A. Uh, like I said, we'd really like to hear from you guys what you are thinking, um, what you like, what you like to see. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass you over to Ronan. Over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for the introduction, and thanks to everybody for joining today's session. Uh, my name is Ronan Trainer, and you should be able to see my screen. So we're just going to, as Sean mentioned, talk about uh, API testing at, at Experian and, and what more you can you can do. Okay, so just a quick look at today's agenda. Um, that's me in the top right hand corner. Um, I'm working with the Ready API team um, and the engineering team actually here in Galway in our EMEA headquarters for about four years now. So what we're going to look at first is what's new in SOAP UI, maybe talk a little bit about our release cycles and um, how we decide what's going to be included in those releases and how we interact and leverage the ideas and thoughts from our open source community as well. So we can maybe have a look at some of the features, um, how we're going to make our API testing more streamlined, quicker, automated, um, built into our CI pipelines. Um, and hopefully you'll get some information um, that you weren't aware, aware of before today's session to help you with your API quality. Um, and of course, any questions you have, you can fire them into the chat box. Uh, and we'll be running a short poll at the end of today's session as well, where you can get a dedicated one-on-one um, -on -one technical demonstration with myself or one of the other members of our team here. Okay, so very quickly before we start, just wanted to pop one slide up on screen and this kind of shows the comprehensive tooling we have um, around the software development lifecycle from a development testing and operations perspective. So you can see at the UI layer, there's various tools from initially coding and collaborating on uh, your code and documents right through to running automated tests from a shift left perspective from your IDEs through to automated point and click testing at the UI layer. Um, a couple of additions to the SmartPair portfolio over the last year, one was cross-browser testing and this allowed us to take any UI tests and spin them up on real devices in the cloud and then most recently we've uh, acquired hip tests which is going to allow us to build our tests using the behavior um, driven development um, test continuously um, and then using hip tests to generate those living documentation um, from our scenarios. Um, QA Complete would be available for test management, so managing both your manual and automated tests and that would integrate with all our tools. Um, but Today's focus, of course, is on the Ready API platform. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, at the API layer, um, although we know that SOAP UI is used very comprehensive in, comprehensively in Experian, there are other tools within the Ready API platform which may be of use as um, you go through different stages of the testing process. 
Uh, and you can see from a development perspective um, at the API layer, we're, we're talking about developing and collaborating on API design, auto-generating that documentation, having a single repository of where the documentation is stored. And then from Swagger Hub or from some other API definition that we may be using, we're, we have the ability then to quickly integrate with our testing tools. So for example, creating our end-to-end -end API tests and SOAP UI and using all the powerful features within that tooling to build those end-to-end -end tests, automate them, have them as part of our regression packs or part of our CI pipelines. We'll touch briefly, we don't have much time today, but um, Load UI Pro is going to allow us to ensure that our not only are our APIs tested from a functional perspective, but we're also very confident that once those APIs are um, deployed to a production environment, that they're going to be able to handle the types of requests and the quantity of requests that we're expecting and respond to systems and users and clients within the SLAs that we've set up. Um, and by load testing, we can ensure that our servers are going to be able to handle that capacity. So we're confident once we go to release different versions of APIs. One short note as well is Swagger Hub and, and I suppose all our API definitions um, integrate with Service V Pro as well. So for example, if we're defining and designing APIs and we're not going to have availability to that API in our UAT or pre-production environment, we can simply take that design and build a dynamic mock within um, minutes or hours, depending on complexity. Then we have that service available now. So for example, if we're working in you know, an agile methodology where we need these services available, then we can very simply create a dynamic mock from our API definition that's going to act uh, very similar to the actual API itself. So first things first, um, a little bit about Ready API and how we manage um, the release cycles. So we're currently on Ready API 2.4. We have a quarterly release, release cycle, um, roughly. Uh, it can be pushed out a little bit depending on the complexity of the features we're adding. And as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, a lot of the feedback we get is from our open source community and of course from our, uh, cost, our our wide customer base worldwide where we we listen to requirements uh, features and um, present these to the product team um, and we can certainly using our customers feedback influence the release cycle um, what's required by our customers um, and ensure we do that in a, in a speedy manner of uh, you know every every quarter so if you look at 2.4, there's a number of different improvements that have been added to uh, the tool already from a UX perspective. So we're working very close with our um, usability experts in-house. Um, because Ready API is quite a complex product, um, once you get into the weeds of it, um, we want to make this, this tool as, as easy as possible for our customers to use. Um, you want to be able to create your tests with a couple of clicks. You want to be able to automate these processes. And you don't want to be coming, coming up against usability issues or stumbling blocks. So small additions that have been very useful is where we've added a quick search in, an, in the navigation panel. Um, and this navigation panel in the projects and in SOAP UI helps us to quickly find uh, test steps or cases or suites or any, any resources and other items in our APIs and projects. Um, this again would have been something that have come from current customers as a feature request and again we listen and we implement um, for those customers. A couple of other things um, at an overall improvement perspective is we've updated reports um, so the ability to generate our project reports, JUnit style reports for automation, and then of course data exporting for automation as well, where you want to consume the results of your tests, maybe in an internal solution, and that's very easy to do by 
exporting the data that's generated from your tests. From a novice user perspective as well, um, we've also implemented uh, hints. So Ready API can display hints that tell users how, can, how they can make their tests more powerful and flexible. For example, by using data in request parameters, using scripts, setting up and changing environments, etc. cetera. Um, and, a, and a couple of things from a best practices perspective, best practices perspective is that at the project level, compared to say SOAP UI open source, we have the ability to save our projects in composite format. Um, and this is gonna allow the Experian team to collaborate on API testing. Um, rather than saving our file as a single XML file, we can save all our functional performance tests, any mocks that we've created in a directory-like structure. Um, we can sync our projects with you know, various different source control tools like GitHub or GitLab. And then we can have that single source of truth and collaborate as a team on that specific project. This is going to be obviously a little bit harder to do if we're working with a single XML file when it comes down to version control. But from a best practices perspective, we can create our composite project and then we can control how we save that project to our source control tools or we could use a Git integration plugin if you happen to be using Git or GitHub. And this is going to automatically save and retrieve those composite projects into a specific repository or branch. One or two other things at the setup level is our environments. So very often when we create our test suites and test cases, we're going to need to run those tests against different environments from either a manual or automated perspective. If at the beginning of our project, we set up these different environments, then we're going to very quickly be able to switch environments in our testing in the UI or we're going to be able to reference the actual environment that we want to automate our tests against. So you can see, for example, here, I could simply set up a, a UAT environment and copy my endpoints and credentials from a project. And then we can change our endpoint to point to our different environments that we've configured. Once we've done that, then when we go into SOAP UI, um, we will have the ability to uh, navigate in and out of those different environments from the drop down here. So you can see, for example, I have a project here in composite format. Um, this is a, a library API that has been designed in Swagger. It's not actually developed yet, but what we've done is we've taken it and we built a mock version of it in service V. Now from a testing perspective, um, my testing team can start scoping their tests against this mock service. Um, in anticipation of getting access to the actual API itself, then we can simply switch our environment, our endpoints, and then run, against, run our tests against that API when it's available. Um, the major advantage here is that by having that virtual service, um, my testing team isn't sitting around for days or weeks waiting for access. We can get access to that service straight away. And this will also work from an integration testing perspective or maybe we have consumers of our API and we want to expose a mock version of that to our consumers so that they can at least begin their integration testing and um, where it doesn't affect our environments because we have everything deployed to a center location with all the rest of our mock services and made available to the systems and users who need to interact with it. Final thing maybe from a best practices perspective is at the project level, I can set up different authorization profiles. So for example, if we need to use OAuth or some sort of authorization, maybe basic authorization, I can simply set up these profiles here. And these profiles can be assigned per environment as well. So that regardless of what environment I'm testing, I can simply select these pre-configured authorization profiles um, and quickly start um, testing uh, the functionality and performance of my APIs. Okay, so just to go through maybe a couple of other improvements. Um, 
obviously Swagger Hub is a, a, a smart bear tool in our portfolio as well, although Swagger is an open source um, framework for designing and defining our REST APIs and, and becoming quite the standard in the industry. The Swagger Hub um, product uh, integrates very cleanly with Ready API as well. So from design to functional testing, performance testing, mocking, right through to post deployment monitoring of our APIs, the Ready API platform in conjunction with Swagger will allow us to streamline that process. Um, specifically with SOAP UI, um, we have developed and released a new Jenkins plugin. Um, and this is gonna help us to easily set up and run our functional tests from Jenkins jobs. This is very uh, clearly documented in our support and documentation uh, platform. So readyapi.smartbear.com. And this plugin is available to download. Uh, and it'll just make integration with Jenkins a lot easier. We've also added things like the ability to set up our command line parameters and launch test runner. So test runner would be a command line runner that allows us to execute and automate our tests from very various different uh, automation or CI systems. Um, and we've just improved and made this process a little bit easier as well. And again, the reporting that has been uh, improved in Ready API 2.4 will also feed into this automation process as well. Couple of small things as well. It may not be um, relative, so I won't spend too much time on it, but we uh, have now added the use of JSON web tokens. So if you need to use that with OAuth 2 authorization, that is now supported. Um, and if you are using databases in your tests from feeding in your requests or data driving mock responses in, in Service V, we've added new panels um, and uh, cleaner usability to how we can set up those JDBC transactions. Okay, if you're using Swagger as well, there is an easier file selection for the Swagger compliance assertion. So when we're importing our API definitions from Swagger and we're running our tests, we wanna make sure that we're compliant with the current version of that API definition. And the Swagger compliance dialog box has a new button that lets us visually, visually select a definition file. Um, in earlier versions, we had to type this. So again, uh, small things, but from a usability perspective, it's um, gonna make hopefully your lives a little bit easier and the tool a little bit clearer to use as well. Okay, so just gonna take a quick break just to see if we have any questions coming through. Um, one question coming through about our release cycles. You might maybe have missed that at, at the beginning, but we do have a quarterly release cycle. Um, as a, a very important customer to SmartBear um, and with all our customers, all upgrades are part of your licenses. And of course, you will get prompted for any new versions of the software um, and they're fully supported um, throughout the uh, term of, of, your, of your licensing. Um, of course, uh, Sean, um, being a corporate account manager, is um, available for anything that needs to be expedited um, or any issues that you're having that need to be escalated. And of course, the engineering team who work very closely with Sean are, are always available to hop on sessions with key customers like Experian should training be required for new members of a team. Or for example, if you know there are certain um, certain testing strategies that you're working on and you'd like some advice or help on, on the setup of that as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through the product just at a high level here as well, just for people maybe on the call who are maybe new to the Ready API platform or have used SOAP UI before in some capacity. The main things we've covered, and that's the difference between maybe using SOAP UI open source years ago and using the Ready API platform. The entire tool suite is broken up um, into the four modules. So SOAP UI, where we're gonna create our end-to-end -end API tests, um, connect to our databases, our data sources in various different ways, and build our end-to-end -end steps and then automate that process from a regression testing perspective or part of our uh, automation builds. 
However, once you've established that your APIs are functioning correctly, um, before we you know, release our APIs to a production environment, we've no way of telling how those APIs are gonna stand up to load unless we actually run some load and performance tests. The major advantage with the Ready API platform is the tight integration between the tools and the speed that we can get started um, and start running these load and performance tests. So for example, if I'm working on the load and performance uh, team, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm not writing scripts. It's not a lengthy process. I can basically take the functional tests that I require that the QA team have already built. And I can start building scenarios where we're spinning up these functional tests. However, we're running them now with hundreds or thousands of simultaneous users. And then we're able to generate information like transactions per second, average response time. We can ensure that we meet the expected SLAs before our APIs are released to production. As with SOAP UI, of course, we can automate these tests and build them into our automation pipelines as well. Um, and very often what we'll see is that, um, you know, if we're releasing um, and adding our code to repositories at a, at a fast pace, we're generally going to be automating our API tests. And then we can all, all, always or also app, automate our load and performance tests as well. Um, and then potentially um, continuously deploy to our pre-production environment once those tests have passed. Again, with Load UI um, automated, we can generate those JUnit reports. We can parse them within the tool that we're using so that we can see if our tests are passing or failing. And if they're failing, we get a clear indication of why they're actually failing. With Load UI itself as well, um, we have the ability to monitor our servers and databases. So it's one thing running our load and performance tests, hitting APIs, getting information back. Um, but if we, if we come across issues, um, it's going to be quite difficult for us to troubleshoot those issues if we don't know what's happening on those target machines. So using server monitoring, and you can see in Load UI here, there is a monitoring tab. This allows us to pull back performance counter data metrics of our target servers. So maybe when we reach a certain level of volume where we're running tests, our server becomes responsive. Maybe if we're updating resources in the database, um, we're not able to do it quick enough and a database server becomes unresponsive. And by monitoring and pulling back those performance counter data metrics, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to diagnose where the issues and bottlenecks are in our systems. Very quickly in Load UI, um, we can distribute tests um, across our network using agents, or more simply put, other servers and machines to generate that load for us. Um, and we can also run tests, and, and maybe a company like Experian would need to run load tests from different uh, locations globally. So we have an integration with Amazon EC2 that allows us to fire up agents in the cloud and generate that load from specific geographies so that we know that our customers or systems interacting with our APIs in Australia, for example, are having the same experience as our customers maybe in, in Germany or in Belgium. From a statistics perspective as well, we can generate all those metrics that you'd expect from a enterprise level load testing tool. Okay, and as I mentioned, everything can be automated as well. Just on the service V perspective as well, you can see that there's the ability to create new virtual APIs using our API definitions by recording traffic, okay, or by manually prototyping or proof, uh, doing a proof of concept of building something manually. The main thing with Service V is the speed. So I can take a Swagger definition, import it, have a mock ready immediately that I can start running my SOAP UI tests against. Um, but the key thing really is that once we've created a mock, we probably want to take it to the next level. So we can data drive the responses. We can add complex dispatch styles to control what responses are dispatched based on the incoming request. And a lot of this can be done without scripting. Once we have those APIs or those mock dynamic mock versions of those APIs developed, we can then simply take them, 
drag and drop them onto Vert server. And that's going to give access to the systems and clients that need to run their tests against those mock services. And um, Vert server is simply an application that can sit in your network, in a Docker container, in the cloud, and allows us to take our local mock services, deploy them into center location, and then start running our tests against them. Okay, so it is almost 2.30 already. Um, time goes very fast in a half an hour when we're um, going through some of the features here. Um, what I'd like to do is launch a couple of polls. I'd really appreciate, appreciate if you could um, answer uh, these questions. Let us know what version of Ready API or SOAP UI you're currently using. And as we co collate that information, and um, we can potentially then set up some follow-up webinars with specific teams within Experian um, to dive a little bit deeper into the tools, be it SOAP UI, or maybe there is a requirement where you need to remove dependencies of third-party services, or you are reliable on a reliant on a service that's been developed by another team, and you want to take control of that. Um, very common scenario, and that's where Service V is used um, very widely um, to create and mock those services, remove those dependencies. Okay, so I'm going to just leave this poll up for a couple of more seconds. Okay, perfect. I'd like to thank everybody for their responses on that poll. And we have one more one more poll that I want to launch before we finish. Okay, so we'd like to know, you know, what region of Experian uh, are you working in as well? So we're just going to launch this poll. And again, thanks for taking the time to just uh, fill this poll in for us. And this is going to obviously give us the information that's going to help us to work closer with the various teams in, in different locations within, within a, a large organization like Experian. Okay, excellent, thank you for that. And we have one more poll that I'm gonna launch. I promise this is the last one. And just one minute. Okay, so the final part of this um, today was very high level. We talked about best practices. Um, talked about some of the new features. A lot of them um, are from a usability perspective in 2.4. Um, as I mentioned, we now have a, a UX team in-house here, actually in our EMEA headquarters. So there's the integration between Swagger and SOAP UI and the different tools that our, our team are working on very closely. So I'm just going to launch this final poll. If you'd like a deeper custom dive of Ready API, for yourself or for maybe a specific team within your organization who may not be using any of our tools, but um, maybe are looking to do some sort of API quality testing. Um, let us know if you would like a, a custom deep dive. And again, of course, you can reach out to uh, Sean on this or um, and we'll certainly be able to organize some tailored sessions for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna end the poll. Again, thanks very much for your participation. Um, and we're almost at the end of the half an hour today. Um, I'd just like to thanks for attending today and taking the time out of your day and just check if you have any questions before we finish up.
Okay, excellent. Um, no questions coming through at the moment. I hope that today was useful for you and I hope to, we can set up some further sessions throughout the rest of the year. Uh, and of course, we're always here um, if you need anything escalated. Um, of course, our dedicated technical support team um, are very responsive um, and, and a great, great to know that you, you have that uh, available to you um, at the click of a button. Um, Sean, um, I think we're done here. Uh, yep. Thanks very much, Ronan. And uh, again, um, thanks to everyone for attending today. Um, I think we're going to send out the recording in case you'd like to share this uh, with any of your colleagues who couldn't make it today. But uh, hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, continue to support you. Uh, maybe speaking to some of you on, uh, as a follow-up to our session today. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, Ronan. And um, have a great day. Thank you.